Hi friends, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's it's long delay, but uh, I'm back. So uh, in this in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, have kind of a practical for uh, a load balancer, uh, external load balancer, where uh, we would have a URL uh, that would be assigned with a public IP, and uh, that URL would be uh, attached to a load balancer which would be a public facing load balancer and behind that load balancer there would be two virtual machines and inside that virtual machines there would be uh, I have installed IAS on it and then I would be trying to take RDP as well as uh, you know I would be trying to open open the uh, website from the browser and see how the load balancing works in terms of uh, the public load balancer and this is the uh, you know the basic uh, thing that we do in production also so uh, it can be a public load balancer and it can be a private load balancer which would be an internal one right uh, which would have a private ip so it would work at, at the same the the only difference uh, in in this practical which i have which i am showing it to you is I would be uh, doing everything from Terraform. Uh, I have already created the scripts for that. So uh, let let just jump jump into it. Okay. So let me just show you what uh, what my code is all about, and then probably it's 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 a very long code. It's a six six hundred uh, uh, line code. So uh, without uh, you know wasting time, I just wanted to show you a little bit of code so that you would understand what my uh, intentions are in terms of the infrastructure and then I'm going to show you uh, how uh, the, uh, the load balancing solution works right so it's again it's a hub and spoke uh, model I have a hub and then I have three different uh, spokes with the hub we have hub vnet and then uh, within the hub vnet we have different uh, subnets involved in it in the spokes we have Three tier up, three tier uh, uh, you know subnets where we have application subnet, and then we have a web subnet, and then we have database subnet, right? And with all those subnet, I have attached uh, uh, an NSG. So uh, with every subnet, there is an NSG involved with have some which will have some basic rules added to it. Uh, but for for the for this particular demo, what I've done is I have altered altered that particular NSG where I want to show you three three eight nine uh, eighty port working right. So we want the servers to be accessible at uh, RDP ports as well as at uh, port number eighty, so that I would be able to browse uh, the the website as well. So this is uh, this is what the code is all about. In the end, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, I've just created a VM uh, and uh, once I created two VMs I created a load balancer I created availability set and and those VMs are part of the availability set and then only you know they are attached to a load balancer so we would be talking about it so uh, if you could see I'll just show you the code uh, in terms of uh, what I did in terms of the uh, uh, the the uh, you know deploying the virtual machine itself so this is where it uh, it all began this is the code where I've already showed you earlier where I I created a hub and spoke model so this is after that so what we have done is we have created a resource which is a public IP so once the public IP is created and it's a dynamic right so it, it would change once the VMs are rebooted or if any of the VMs are deallocated if all the VMs are deallocated this public IP gets released after after every say four five days and then uh, what i have done is i have created a domain name right so it it would be az class uh, one two three at at some microsoft.com right so i have created an fdq and uh, fqdn so that it would be accessible uh, through browser as well so uh, this would be the output and i have created the dns uh, name as well for that pub public ip the second thing which I did was to create a availability set. Okay, so this is the availability set I was talking about. And then once we have the availability set, what we did was we created a, a NIC and then attached that NIC into, uh, uh, in, into a, uh, a virtual machine. So once we build the virtual machines, we attach that NIC there. So we give, so this is the NIC. 
uh, reference and when we are creating the vm we are going to give the nick reference right so this is the code for virtual machine and this is the code for uh, network interface card and i'm keeping the private ip as also dynamic you can always have static and then you can uh, specify what kind of ip address you want to allocate that particular vm right so this is this is the code all about for uh, network interface card and this is the NIC so this is the uh, code for virtual machine so here what we do is we give the name of the virtual machine we give the uh, you know the resource group uh, in this case I'm, I'm deploying the virtual machine inside the hub itself the location okay which it would be you know the same location as the uh, uh, source group of hub I have given the size and i have given the uh, username password this can be encrypted you can you can use key vault reference and you can keep your password in the secret in key vault and then you can refer to that right so but in test purpose i i can have uh, the password inside the code as well so it's it's very well uh, accessible and then i can simply copy paste to login right so so this is this is where the password and username comes into picture and uh, this is where we refer the the network interface card so in in this particular so there are different ways right to create a virtual machine from terraform uh, the these are changing because of the versions that that we have in terraform so currently i have installed the latest version of terraform and uh, working on the latest version of the uh, the code itself so this is this is where we uh, uh, i mean you can refer to this code from uh, registry.terraform.io as well so uh, this is, that is where i i picked the code from and and we worked upon it so uh, this is the OS disk. So OS disk is hidden right in, in, in the link in the uh, Terraform documentation. They, they have not mentioned the name, but you can always add a, a parameter to it and then you can have the name, right? Uh, as per the standards, so com some companies ask us, right, uh, that you want a specific name for the disk that are attached to the VMs. So this is where you can add the name into the disk that, that you are attaching it to a VM. Right, so the, the, you can have a specific name for for all the disk, even if it is a data disk or an OS disk. Right, so once the disk is uh, uh, being being said, then we refer to the image. And in this case, we have uh, we are creating a Windows machine, and uh, the OS would be 2019. Uh, so this is VM01. The same thing I've done for VM02, where uh, I have created a NIC, I have created uh, VM02 with the name as VMCI Hub W02, right? So everything is the same it's except the, the network interface card as well as the name of the VM. The, the name of the disk itself is, is different uh, and, and rest, rest of the things are the same, right? I'm, I'm taking it the same uh, size, I'm giving it the same username password just to just to be uh, make it easy, right? So uh, after that, what we have done is, uh, so. Uh, once we have uh, you know uh, availability set created and uh, you know public ip created as well as vms created so now is the time for creating a load balancer right for creating a load balancer uh, so you have to, you just have to so this is the code right so creating a load balancer is easy if you, if you are creating a load balancer it's easy but when you are configuring a load balancer and you are creating rules and you know back end pools and you are adding the vm into it that is where the comp the complex nature of Terra Terraform comes into picture because it has different uh, you know configuration and you have to use those configuration and some of the ver uh, so Terraform versions are are important to understand where some of the uh, some of the things resources are obsolete and you are not able to use those so you have to be vigilant enough to understand what is uh, when to where what right so you have to go and into the documentation and and to understand uh what is the latest version of terraform and to what is what would be the latest version of the code that you're using to build the infrastructure right? So in this case what what i've done is i've created a load balancer uh with this name and uh i'm using it the same rg in it to the hub rg and this is the only, the simple code where i'm just assigning a public ip to the load balancer so the next complex complex thing come afterwards where we are creating a backend pool and with backend with backend pool, uh, so this is the code for creating a backend pool. And when you are creating a backend pool, you have to assign that backend pool with the 
uh, network interface card of your VM, right? Uh, you can do that or what you can do is you can simply add the IP. If the VMs have a static IP, you can add, very well add that IP. But in my case, I have the VM which does not have a static IP. Remember, I, I told you that's a dynamic. So in that case, what I have done and, and that, that should be the practice that there can be a case where you are changing the, you know, the IPs and, and, and for that matter, uh, make it dynamic or or static uh, make it a difference i mean you are attaching your load balancer backend pool not into the ips but you are attaching it directly to the network interface card so this is the association which comes into picture where it says uh, azure rm network interface backend address pool association so this is the new thing which uh, you know i want to discuss because you will not be finding that inside the uh, telephone.io in all the versions because this is the latest and, and you would be able to see that in the latest version of telephone uh, so once you associate your backend pool with the nick so, so i have done that for both the nicks right so it would be showing in the backend pool so once that is done uh, then then we have to create a help probe and in in this case uh, i have created a help probe for the rdp which and the port would be 3389 right the second would be the creating the uh, load balancing rule so load balancing rule is very important because uh, this is where you are associating your uh, uh, you know the, the front end ip which would be the public ip for load balancer and the back end pool which would be the vms in the back end right so how you are associating it uh, defines uh, is defined by the rules that you are creating so in this case i've created two rules one is for the rdp and the second one is for the http which would be the you know uh, uh, port number 80 so these are the two rules that i have created so first rule is for the rdp where you are defining the uh, load balancer ip the rg the name the protocol the front end port the back end port you know so this is where you give the configuration of the public ip and the backend pool so these are the two things which are important right because you are associating your rule from your front end ip to the backend pool of the vms right so this is this is where you are creating two different uh, uh rules so in 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 this particular case uh, if you could see uh, i am um creating depends upon uh, you know reference as well why because i don't want this rule to be created before we have uh, an availability set a probe as well as a load balancer because uh, until unless we have these three this rule should not be coming so this is this is where i i prefer using depends upon so that uh, uh, terraform knows when to create what right so this is i have already run this it's it's working so i'll just show you what all uh, i created so this is this is where uh, let's just go into the resource group and you would be able to see my my resources so this is rgci hub uh, net01 so i most of the things are created inside this so if you could see here what i did was i have an availability set i showed you right and then two disk which are the os disk and they are associated with vm01 and vm02 right then we have a load balancer and then we have NICs attached to the VMs. Then we have different NSGs, uh, which are attached to the subnet level and not to their NIC level. If you want to see, I'll just show you. If I go into the NIC, I don't have the NSG associated with that, but I have uh, the NSGs, which is associated at the uh, subnet level. Okay, so these are the NSGs, which are associated with the subnet level. And these are the virtual machine, which I have, right? And this is the VNet. So this is my uh, uh, complete lab, right, in terms of the hub. And we have different spokes. I don't have that much, uh, uh, you know, resources in that. I just wanted to show you how a load balancer is working in, in this particular case, right? So uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, simply, uh, uh, so once I have these VMs configured, what I did, I logged into the VM and I installed IAS services on it and it is still working. Uh, I can show you. Uh, I'll just uh, I'm I'm logged in into the first VM um, and I'll just show you that this is the uh, hub VM02. I'll just br uh, browse the default website and what I did was I created the website uh, I mean the local host and I've just updated it to VMCI hub W02 and uh, the other one is W01 so that I would be able to uh, you know see if uh, the load balancing is actually working or not right so uh, i am already taking the rdp from the public ip 
which is attached to the VM. So it is working, right? So RDP is also working because I am connected to a public IP and, and public IP is attached to a load balancer. Let's go into the load balancer just to confirm that everything is, is correctly set up. Right, so this is the load balancer which I created and in the backend pool I you could see that there are two VMs 02 and 01 so these are the backend pools and uh, and these are the network interface card into it and we have load balancing rules and I have two rules that I already told you one is for um, 3389 right and the other one is for port number 80 so let's just go back and uh, and try to browse this uh, website and what I did was there was a public IP so this is the public IP and it is attached to uh, to the load balancer right and what I did was I added this particular DNS here from Terraform itself remember so so this is the complete address okay so everything you add into it it will go into uh, you know the, the region and then dot clouds up cloud up dot azure dot com so this is this is how you are connecting your uh, website so what i'll do is i'll just copy this and i'll try to browse and see which uh, vm it is hitting so that it so now you could see that vmci hub w01 so this is this is where it is hitting right let's just open up a browser in cognito mode and to see how it is hitting in the other end so yeah again it is hitting in the one so let's just go into the VM and then try. Uh, let me just see if I can have uh, 0, 02 as well somewhere. Yep, so you could see the same URL and it is working as a load balancing solution, right? So it's a public URL which is accessible through, pub, uh, through internet. And you could see behind uh, we have two VMs which have IAS in it. And both are working in, in correctly right so this is how the load balancing solution works in terms of public this will also work in private if you change the front-end IP into uh, private so it would be working as a private load balancer again so uh, thank you thank you very much for uh, for for bearing the time and uh, I would be creating more videos uh, related to load balancers and all so stay tuned thank you thanks a lot